Welcome to The Lake Show, where you can find out what's going on in and around Lake Loudoun. This show is brought to you by the Fort Loudoun Lake Association, a nonprofit environmental conservation organization that keeps Fort Loudoun Lake safe, clean, and fun. I'm Angela Howard, the Executive Director of Fort Loudoun Lake Association, and I work with zone managers and an in-house scientist who remove trash and debris daily, educate our community on pollution prevention, and monitor stormwater and the health of our streams. And one of the things that we love to do is work with the community and other people that are in water quality. And today I have back Renee Oyas from Tennessee Clean Water Network. Welcome back. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for coming. Um, and we've talked about before what the Tennessee Clean Water Network does, but mm -hmm. will you remind our audience in case they haven't joined us? Sure. The Tennessee Clean Water Network uh, empowers Tennesseans to claim their right to clean water in healthy communities. And we do that through legislation to make sure our laws are as strong as they can be and not weakened. We do that through regulation, so we make sure that the state is upholding the intent mm -hmm. of the laws. And then we use the power of the courts if uh, the state doesn't want to enforce its, lo its own laws. So ah. we enforce them. <laughs> Sounds like it starts off with a little whistleblowing. Uh -huh. and yes. Then a little maybe letter writing. Yeah. And then stronger. Then a lawsuit. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. we're awfully glad that you are here in Knoxville and, in, and for Tennessee because there's some people that probably aren't as concerned as we are. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. But I think that's really changing. We've noticed that the public is really far more interested in having clean water and understanding that pollution is not good, not only for the environment, but also for business. Right, yeah. business and for recreation. That's true. But today I think you're going to talk about Williams Creek, yeah. a specific project that yeah. you all, I think, headed up the project, but I'm going to let you take off with that. So how did it all begin? Well, Williams Creek is a lovely little urban creek in East Knoxville. Mm -hmm. Where exactly? Did well, the part that we're working on is between Biddle, Street and Chestnut Street in okay. East Knoxville. Okay. And it's a little tiny stretch. Well, it's not tiny. It's about a mile long. And it was primarily forested, undeveloped parcels. Mm. And uh, we got involved in the project after we um, settled uh, with the Knoxville Utility Board mm -hmm. back in 2004. Mm -hmm. One of the things that you can do um, in lawsuits is that instead of paying the civil fines to the federal treasury where that right. money goes out of the community, they opted to offset their civil penalties with a project that could benefit the community. So wait, let me make sure I understand mm -hmm. this. So if they got fined, whatever mm -hmm. that amount was, mm -hmm. instead of it going just as a tax would, let's right. say, they actually focused that fine amount to clean up what they did? Or well, just to clean up to that? Do something, a, a project, an extra project. So oh. something above and beyond what they would be required to do. Well, that's wonderful. It is wonderful. Yeah, it's a great way yeah. to use funds and it stays in our community. It stays in the community, and that was the big point. And that area, uh, the area of, of East Knoxville had been pretty hard hit by sewer overflows. Mm. And so there was this, these unforested or these undeveloped forested parcels that, that we thought would be great to have in an urban forest. Mm -hmm. So we worked um, with the landowners. Sometimes people didn't know that they owned the parcels. Sometimes they thought they owned it, but actually somebody else owned it. So we had to do a lot of title cleaning. We yeah. bought it parcel by parcel. You did? Yeah, yeah. They so were subdivided. The stretch up beside the creek on both sides? Actually, we have an easement on one side, mm -hmm. and we have, we have purchased the properties on the western side of the creek is all owned. And we gifted them to the city of Knoxville for their Greenway program back in June. Just this past year? Just this past June, yeah. So now the city owns it. Oh, wonderful. Are they working yeah. with um, Legacy Parks? No. On that project? So no. this is something that the city's taken on. Right. Oh, that's wonderful. Okay, yeah. so now they own that area. Now what's happening? So now we have a local funder that was really interested in enhancing that area. You see, when we gave the parcels to the city, it just went into their Greenway program, and whenever they were able to get the funding and the time to do mm -hmm. the Greenway was when they were going to do it. So we kind of didn't know when it was going to be available to the mm -hmm. public. Mm -hmm. um, but this, um, the Aslan Foundation stepped up and said, you know, we want to move this along. And so they have funded us to do some trail creation. And we, there are some parcels on the other side of Daly Street um, 
that are also forested and not developed, and so we're going to try to purchase a couple properties and mm -hmm. widen the forest. It's currently four acres, and we'd like to see it maybe double out there to eight acres. Does this connect to the other greenways? I mean, can you get on a bike and, and run through this yet? Well, we we well, no, right eventually. now. Eventually, we'd yeah. like to hook it up. The, the greenway that goes right by the Tennessee River, mm -hmm. it's sort of designed to go through the Williams Creek Golf Course, and then mm -hmm. it would hook up with these parcels, and then we take it on to the botanical gardens is oh, one idea. Oh, wonderful. I and know, right now, that be great? yeah, it's kind of chopped up a little bit. Right. So we're working to just combine all these parcels, and the city has been working out there as well. They bought a bunch of properties on Cavalier Drive mm. to do some stormwater management. Mm -hmm. um, there's a little mm -hmm. unnamed tributary to Williams Creek that's kind of blown out, so they're going to do some work there. And they're helping us. So it's a huge project with the city of Knoxville stormwater department, solid waste, Parks and Rec, um, Beth Eason Architecture is designing the trail. Hmm. Um, who else do we have involved? Um, there are the Aslan Foundation. We have um, the Tennessee Department of Environment and Conservation is giving us sampling data. So is the Knoxville Utility Board. They're back involved. And sampling um, data for our audience is that they're testing the water to see right. if there's any bacteria that's bad. Right. And actually if bacteria that's good or some bugs that we talked about before yeah. that means right. our stream health is healthy. Right. Now that stream back in 2000, the Isaac Walton League did a Benthic study, which mm -hmm. means they looked at the bugs. Mm -hmm. And it got a very, very low score. It got a 24, which means it's poor. Mm -hmm. It's poor water quality. But that was back when they were having a lot of sewer overflow. So we're really hoping that now that the sewer, is, the sewer issues have been resolved out there, okay. that we'll see some health in the creek. Also, the place is completely overrun by invasive weeds. Completely oh. overrun. In fact, there's one section that is covering the kudzu is covering up all the other all the other invasive weeds. Yeah, how do you get rid of that stuff? Goats. Oh no! This sounds like a real environmental project. It's going to be the goats going to overturn everything. They have to get what are going to eat tigers everything. to get back yeah. in with the goats. We've, we're <laughs> um, contracting with a guy from from Whistle Pig Farms who owns goats, and he has them primarily to do noxious weed management. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, That's totally. Well, and then what do you do about their their poop? Yes. <laughs> well, their poop is is not that bad. They're not go they're not going to be on the property for that long. Yeah. So we're, what they do is they have an electric fence and a dog. It kind and of rounds so, them up. Yeah, that kind of keeps an eye on them. And so they, we're just going to move the electrical fence through the property and have the goats stay for three or four weeks and eat and then just move down. Wow. So, yeah, so they, um, what they do is they go through and they eat all the vegetation first. Mm -hmm. So they'll eat the, the leafed out vegetation, so they'll eat the leaves and the stems. And then if we bring them back to do a second pass, they'll start nibbling on the root structure. And once they start nibbling on the root structure, they'll... They'll basically destroy the weed. So wow. we're really hoping that we can have them on the property for three years. Wow. And really just do a really good job. They say if you have goats on for about three years in a cycle, you'll mm. get 90% weed abatement. That's wonderful. Yeah, so in we don't have to use way. pesticides. No, thank goodness, which would go into the stream, which would go into our lake. That's I'm sure right. you wouldn't like that. No. So is there any water-specific cleanup besides you know taking the structure? Uh, enhancing the structure for the, the sewer. So now you've stopped the source. Is that the only source? I'm sure there's some runoff and things like that. Well, it's been spiking during wet weather for mm -hmm. E. coli, so we're not really sure where That's, the E. coli is coming yeah. from. So we, are, we may do a little bit of community um, awareness around spotting sewer overflows just in case there are sewer overflows that are happening that just are going unreported, mm -hmm. which could, that could be part of it. It could also be E. coli from wildlife. Right, right. And in that mm -hmm. case, you know, there's not a whole lot you can do. Mm -mm. It could also be E. coli from um, dogs, from domesticated pets. Right. And so that's another educational component. That's teaching people to pick up their pet waste or working with the Humane Society to deal with rounding up the strays. That kind of thing. So. Well, and I just had somebody ask me just today if it was okay if they threw their dog poop off their boat. And I was like, nope. No. <laughs> I don't think it's any really good to do that no, at all. Thrush it or flush it. Yeah. Yeah, flush so it. So at the end of this project, mm -hmm. what will it look like? Well, we'll have a trail probably starting at Biddle um, on the eastern side of the creek. There's a little parking lot there. Mm -hmm. We're hoping to get a structure to go over the creek. And then you can sort of wind around in a little circular area in the forest. 
Um, Daly Street has had a dump on it for a number of years. Um, it's an impromptu dump. It's not mm -hmm. a legal dump. Mm -hmm. In fact, when the city was really trying to close up the dump, they went through the garbage and found out that it's people from the county that are coming in and dumping their trash there for free. Because mm -hmm. oh, city okay. people get free trash pickup, but county people don't. So the county people were coming in and just, I mean, I would go there and find whole households, you know, a couch, a television, a stove, I mean, the whole nine and yards. And that was right near the creek? Well, it was, it, on was, that property. it was on the property. It wasn't really mm. close to the creek. But, um, and the city just had no way, really, of stopping it without having somebody out there 24-7. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to purchase the property on the other side, hopefully, and then we're going to close off Daly Street. So there will be no access to that area, and then they're going to grate that and then make, and then add an extra few acres to the property. So we'll get rid of the dump. Mm -hmm. That's another project. That's wonderful. So, yeah, that would be really good. So we're running a little bit out of time, but mm -hmm. a couple of things I want to bring to the audience attention mm -hmm. is, first of all, it takes initiative, and thank you for taking that initiative, oh, and an organization to come in, actually put together a project with all those components, and for those donors, those wonderful donors yes. that keep both of our organizations really going. That's right. Because the government can't, um, you know, be handouts all the time for us. It's really mm -hmm. about people that get um, passion passionate mm -hmm. about what we're doing, what you're doing, something like Williams Creek that actually gets it to happen. It's how Chattanooga yeah. happened, you know? No, yeah. So I really want to encourage people that mm -hmm. if they if they like projects like this, um, you go to the Tennessee Clean Water Network dot org. So is it T C C W N dot org is our yeah. website. See what they're doing, see what you, they may want to get involved in. They can go to yeah. Fort Loudon Lake Association or F L L A K E dot org. Um, two ways we can people you can use people too to volunteer or to donate, right? Yeah. Absolutely. In fact, we're going to have some work days out there. There's going to be some hand, um, some hand management of the weeds out there. So there'll be some weed pulling days. Weeds and goats. Weeds and goats. People, yes. people and goats. And yeah. then some trash pickup on the stream too. That's so. wonderful. Well, thank you so much You're for welcome. being on our show again and and sharing with the audience a wonderful project that was right here in Knoxville. Yeah, we're excited. It's really been a lot of fun. All right. Well, I'll see you next time. Thanks Great. so much.